This episode is sponsored by Blinkist. Honestly, I'd love to be able to go and read more non-fiction. Personally, right now I want to learn more about areas of science I never got to explore yet, like the wild world of medicine, which seems super complicated. You may empathise with the fact that I keep finding myself asking, where did the time go? It's a pandemic lockdown, I can't even go out much, and yet, where are the hours going? How am I going to find time to learn about all the things? All the things! Well, Blinkist condenses non-fiction books into bite-sized 15-minute highlights, so you can absorb the main talking points and learn the fundamentals from any of its thousands of titles without having to set aside hours, days, whatever, to get through it. You can whip them up on your phone to read or listen to like a podcast. And without breaking the time bank, you'll be brimming with information on all manner of topics like bizarre curiosities from medical history in Thomas Morris's The Mystery of the Exploding Teeth. What a title. The first 100 people to click this link in the description are going to get unlimited access for one week to try it out completely free. You can cancel any time in that period and you'll also get 25% off if you want full membership. Many thanks to Blinkist for the offer. Now on to more FIA shenanigans in our latest video. After the rigmarole of the Tracing Point pink Mercedes scandal this year and a whole hullabaloo about what exactly constitutes original design these days, the FAA calmed down the ruckus by agreeing to implement more concrete rules limiting the copycatting of parts between teams. The FAA has now formalised these in the updated technical regulations for 2021 and while their original concerns were around wholesale copying of another car's ideas from top to bottom, the regulations don't cover this at all and do instead focus on individual parts. This isn't a bad thing, as I'll get onto in a bit. So the updates come via Article 2233 of the Technical Regulations for all those of you reading along at home, where they explain how you are and are not allowed to bring another team's amazing ideas into your own design. Firstly, the regulations note that, of course, you can be inspired by another team's design concept. I'll go into this later, but if, say, Renault turn up with front wing end plates that look like Pikachu's tail and you go, ah, oh, that's a brilliant idea, why didn't I think of that? I'm going to hit the design desk and have a crack at my own version. That would be allowed. You're inspired, you understand the reasons for the concept, you design your own version using your engineering nous. That's absolutely fine and a big part of F1. That's why F1 cars have a lot of the same ideas, because someone dreamed it up once and everyone else went, ah, oh, man, I'm having that. But the regulations continue and make clear that, firstly, any information about a competitor's design must come from actual public events and tests. So this means no hacking into the Ferrari computers to nick their NVID power unit designs. And no faxing off your blueprints to Woking either. The rules work both ways. You can't take intellectual property from a competitor and you can't send intellectual property to a competitor. Furthermore, no competitor may design its listed parts, that's any component a team has to design itself, via reverse engineering. Now, reverse engineering is a very broad term, and in many cases it can include just, you know, looking at a thing and copying it. You see a good idea and you think, having that. But that's not what the FIA is going for here, so they specifically define reverse engineering. It lists four points that attempt to cover what essentially amounts to digitally scanning in competitors' work into 3D models by any means. This attempts to distinguish between eyeballing it and from having an accurate model of another component. Now, Racing Point happens legally to have in their possession the CAD models of several Mercedes parts, including the rear brake ducts that they were ultimately busted for using illegally. There's a video on the fine details of that that you can see on this channel. But the Racing Point saga began from the point of their RP20 looking remarkably like Mercedes W10 from 2019, and this began a conversation about whether it was cool to just outright copy another team's entire design philosophy from tip to tail. Wasn't it a bit against the spirit of the rules of individual design? Now again, I stress, these new rules don't actually address that at all. Racing Point wouldn't have broken any of the rules that have been introduced because they broke completely different rules in the sporting regulations, not the technical ones. But these new regulations are supposed to head off the concern that hardcore reverse engineering could occur in the future. Now how would this so-called 3D photography, surface scanning or clever software actually work? Well, there are numerous ways to do this, and often techniques are combined to create the most accurate 3D model possible. So, say you wanted to create an accurate 3D model of, I don't know, a tomato. You could do some laser scanning on it. You could point a camera on it and run some linear laser light over it from various different angles. And if you know your positions of the camera and the tomato, you can work out from the way the laser line is distorted over the object exactly how the object is shaped. You can also do this with something called structured light scanning, whereby you essentially project an image over your tomato. 
Now the image is normally supposed to be something easy to measure, like a series of regular stripes, dots or squares, and then when you project it over the tomato, software can work out the shape of the surface from the way the pattern is distorted. You can also just fire laser light at it, and by knowing the position of the laser and the camera, measuring the way the laser light reflects off the tomato, and by knowing the speed of light and measuring the timing and quality of the reflected laser light, build up an accurate picture of the shape of the surface of the tomato. Now you can even do all this without any fancy lasers or light projecting at all. You can create a pretty accurate 3D model with just a bunch of normal photographs. In fact, this is how your brain works out 3D to a certain extent, except your brain does it on a smaller scale. Stereograms exploit how your brain computes 3D space. You'll probably know these as magic eye pictures. Uh, here's an example. The idea here is to relax the focus of your eyes so parts of the image start to overlap, and if you can do this, your brain will lock on to the point where it spots a 3D image happening. In this case, this is a shark. Now that's a bit abstract, but you can just do it with two photographs. These two images of a delightful horse and cart were taken at the same time, but an eye's width apart, so essentially mimicking the positions of your left and right eye. If you can cross your eyes so the left image overlaps the right one, you should instead see one image in 3D. Marvellous. Feel free to pause if you need a sec to make this work. I'm moving on though. So as your left eye and your right eye are seeing the world from slightly different angles, they see slightly different images. Objects closer to your eyes move across your vision more dramatically than objects further away. If you hold up a finger and close each eye alternately, you'll spot your finger jumping back and forth in front of the background. From seeing how much different parts of an image change between your two eyes, the brain can work out how close they are and assign them depth values. And so can a computer. But a computer can use loads of images, not just the two. As long as you know where each camera is compared to the object it's scanning, you can build up a lot of data about the 3D surface it's observing through multiple images. And this is called photogrammetry. Google Earth does exactly this to build up a 3D map. It overlays photographs taken from aircrafts looking down at the Earth, and works out how the images change from different perspectives to work out the contours of the landscapes in three dimensions. You can see this more thoroughly explained in a great video linked in the card above. And you can even get hands-on and use machines that touch the tomato and run mechanical arms over its surface. And as the machine knows where the arms are in 3D space, it can feel the surface of the tomato and log a 3D model of it. All of this information, however you gather it, gets logged as a points cloud, essentially a 3D scattergraph. Hundreds of points represent the surface with x, y, z coordinates forming a 3D shape, polygonal mesh, or a surface that can be further translated into a CAD model. And once you're there, well, you're in business and you can start building your components. Now, the FIA has a right to 3D scan anything it wants if it suspects foul play. It can go into Aston Martin and scan its brake ducts and compare them to Mercedes brake ducts. And if they match, well, there'll be some explaining to do. They can also double check that the brake ducts or whatever that are on the car are identical to the CAD models supplied to the FIA by the teams. The teams, of course, supply a lot of their CAD models as part of the scrutineering process, so being able to barge in and do a quick scan check makes it easier for the FIA to police the designs. So this all makes a lot of sense. The FIA are explicitly outlawing copying via scanning, essentially. They're saying if you want to copy Renault's front wing end plate or whatever, you have to eyeball it. And for the most part, this will absolutely work just as it always has. In F1, you see a cool thing and you copy it. But you can't just copy something and bung it onto your car, you have to understand how it works and properly integrate it into your car. That's still using engineering and understanding. Racing Point couldn't actually make their Mercedes clone work at first. They took a huge step backwards in their early versions. It took them a lot of work, educated work, to engineer their own pink Mercedes that actually had pace and developability. They did the work. Apart from on the brake ducts, obviously. So I guess it's similar to saying, if you want to enter a Mona Lisa into an art contest, you're not allowed to scan and bring a copy of the original. You have to grab your paintbrush and make your own version. Now, this wouldn't be a very exciting entry, but you would at least show some artistic skill. And I guess the real question I'm still left asking is, how are the FAA going to know that shenanigans didn't go on? If Mercedes chose to be sneaky and scan Alfa Romeo for some reason, maybe the Alphas have some really great diffusers or something, how could the FAA prove that that was the case, especially with photogrammetry. 
Teams hire photographers all the time to take loads of pictures of rivals' cars. That's why the bouncers often come out and block a clear view of the goods. If Mercedes said to their photographer, go and get me as many different angles of the Alpha Diffuser as you can, and then they build a 3D model from the photographs and created a CAD model from that, how would the FIA know that's what's happened? Mercedes could just say, well, someone from their aero department popped into a meeting one day and said, Hello, fellow engineers. I've got this great idea for a diffuser. And as long as the diffuser isn't exactly the same, I'm not sure how the FAA could prove its dark origins. Nonetheless, this step has pleased the team, so civil war is abated for a few more months before they start arguing about the next thing, which will probably be letting Red Bull have their engine freeze or not. <laughs> <laughs>